Well, uh, let's start today uh, one of the most interesting topic that is uh, sex determination uh, in case of living organism. So today we will totally focus on a certain insects and human being and how the sex determination occurs. Uh, prior entering into the topic, uh, we'll just understand the beginning who started this and how it came to the existence. And at the end of uh, the topic today, we'll see the sex determination in a very uh, socialized society of insect that is honeybees, that is haplodiploidy type of sex determination. So let us focus why this sex determination is uh, necessary. See, this is being a puzzle since ancient time that what makes uh, the progeny uh, male or what makes the progeny female, I mean the offspring why our siblings are like uh, female or male or like that. So these are the questions uh, where from things a long ago. But uh, there was not any uh, solid explanation, okay. There are some uh, more theories proposed by different scientists. We'll focus today on chromosomal theory and a slight talk on the environmental theory. So in case of uh, this sex determination study, a German biologist, Hermann Henking, in 1890s, he studied a lot on the insect, their male insect, female insect, then the egg and sperm. And whenever he was studying, see, at this era, 1890, uh, the microscopic study available was just up to cell cycle, cell division, okay? Not that uh, inside steps of meiosis and different sub steps were not that developed at that time. So what he concluded, Herman Hinking, while studying on the sex determination search of his experiment in insect he found 50 percent of those male insects have something different and where he observed that something different he was observed that something different inside the nucleus but he was not able to distinguish that of course technological limitations so he just concluded that something is more special or different inside the nucleus and he called that as the special nuclear arrangement there. After a decade of his work and his finding, one scientist, Wilson, he gave a very good explanation what Henking studied. Henking concluded that something was different, something was different inside that nucleus, so he called that a nuclear material or nuclear arrangement there. But Wilson concluded that that something nuclear material or arrangement inside was none other than the chromosome. What is chromosome? Chroma means color, soma means body, coloring body that is being observed by staining. So that something special which is thought to be responsible for sex determination in the next generation was nothing but the chromosome and Wilson was very uh, efficient in concluding that that one chromosome is small and chromosome are arranged in pair. So that small chromosome, that is Y chromosome, might have been missed by the findings of one more scientist, Macklin or Henking. So he said that these coloring body chromosomes actually decide the sex of the next generation, whether it should be male or female. And very solid proof was being proposed by the work of uh, what he called Nettie Steven, an American scientist, who gave a lot of experimental proof that these chromosomes actually decide the sex of the next generation. So, covering all that, Wilson put forward this theory with the work of Steven Nettie also. Uh, chromosomal theory, but before going into chromosomal theory, let us see what is this environmental theory. Environmental theory was being proposed by a very great scientist, naturalist and biologist that is Aristotle. He said that the when uh, during sexual intercourse, when male heat overdominates the female heat, the next progeny will be the male. Or when the female cold overcompensates the male heat, then the next progeny will be a female daughter, what you call female. And this hypothesis is somewhat, uh, what you call, acceptable in certain reptiles, you can consider as certain crocodiles where the temperature of egg hatching decides the gender, but that's not our concern. In NCRT, the prime fact is focused on the chromosomal theory of sex determination. So we got the background idea, Henkin's work, Wilson's work, 
platelet is Stevens work and we have a chromosomal theory. Now what does this chromosomal theory explains? Okay. He this theory explains that who decide the gender in the next generation after fertilization because we know Mendel's inheritance each parent contribute 50% that means two parents are contributing equally then one of the parent might be there who is deciding the next generation's gender so by considering that who will decide obviously two individuals are there either it should be male or it should be female okay so we'll consider the first case of male heterogamy that male is deciding the sex of next offspring okay so first we will see male heterogamy now here two cases are there based upon the presence and absence or type of chromosome xx xy which is present in us also human beings also that females are 2x chromosome and males are each one x chromosome and y chromosome that means here males are heterogametic females are homogametic so in xx xy system of sex determination which is male heterogamy male are heterogametic and those heterogametes are x and y and the homogametes in female are both x chromosome that x body which is being proposed by henkin okay another case in male heterogamy is quite interesting here the female has both xx chromosome but the male has only one x chromosome that's why this is called xx xo or x null x0 so xx x0 in which females are homogametic but males are having only one chromosome that is x chromosome and this male heterogamy is called xx xo system now sequentially we have to memorize the examples correctly to have uh, what you call tackling with match the pairs type of question xx xy is being studied in human being as well as in drosophila melanogaster that fruit fly of thomas and morgan and xx xo as per ncert it is present in grasshoppers and some of the cockroaches okay so example should be precise xx xy who grasshopper and us human beings xx xo grasshopper more precisely and cockroaches too we see here the male heterogamy here male heterogamy means male parent is deciding the gender of offspring how that occurs by mendelian inheritance just we'll see let us see the next perspective what if female decide the character or gender of the next generation so that is considered as female female heterogamy now this is a classic example seen in birds specifically and fishes too so remember the example zz zw now we have seen here in xx xy xy was heterogametic and that was male in zz zw zw are females and zz's are males and here females gamete decide the progeny gender okay so this zz zw in which female is heterogametic and that heterogametes are z and w chromosome this is seen in birds and fish so remember xx xy this sex determination is present in drosophila and human xx xo grasshopper and cockroach zz zw in fishes and birds up now we'll go to the opposite scenario of xx xo where xx two are female single x is male in grasshopper and cockroach reverse that zz zw this zz z0 sorry this is another sex determination where female is heterogametic who decides but here as in xx xo male has only one chromosome and that decide this sex of next generation in zz zo female has only one chromosome that decide the sex of next generation whereas zz that is two chromosomes are present in case of male and this classic example is seen in moths and 
butterflies. So once again revise x x x y grasshopper and human. Then x x x o grasshopper and cockroaches. Z z z w birds and fishes. And then last one z z z o moth and butterflies. So this has to be remembered correctly. That is good for the match the pairs. Now let us see in human how sex determination occurs. Before going that into uh, what you call Mendel's Yeffen progeny type of crossing, understand that in human total 23 pairs of chromosomes are there. 23 pairs means pair means 2. So we have 46 chromosomes. Okay. Now in this 46 chromosome, 22 pairs are of autosome that controls different characters of the body. But one pair that is called allosome that is actually the sex chromosome. Now that pair can be XX or that can be XY. So here AA stands for autosome, XX stands for that allosome. Okay. So what we are doing now? We are crossing. What? See this is now female. Now this is now male because here it is x y okay fine so what we are doing just crossing if suppose okay now in case of crossing we have to first prepare the gametes okay so since we are deployed only one will come in the gamete so one autosome and one chromosome that is x here from female parent here one autosome and one from male parent this one and another combination that is y autosome plus y autosome plus x why because of heterogametic nature what happens if this aa finds a pair with this x that is two autosomes and this two x that gives rise to a female child whereas this a when match with this pair but instead of x here if y comes there in that pairing then the progeny will be male because x y so this is simple mendelian inheritance nothing to be confused here okay why here two different types of gametes are shown a and x a and y because x y is heterogametic and x x only one gamete because it is homogametic okay now you understood this how the sex determination is human is there okay 46 chromosome, 23 pair, out of which 22 pairs are autosome, one is sex chromosome, pair that is allosomes, okay? And how sex determination have different gametes? See, before gamete formation, we are deployed, so we will take one one each. And when they cross with each other and come together, 50% from one parent, we have, when two X come together, female, when the X combines with the Y, we have male progeny, okay? Now, Come to the interesting topic for which we have decided to talk at the end that is uh, a, a socialized insect that is honeybees. We cultivate them for what? For honey purpose. Okay. But beside honey, there is a lot of interesting that there is a social groupism in that honeybee comb. Okay. What is that? Mainly three types of honeybees are present in which two are female types and one is male type okay now just as i said in human we are how many chromosome 46 we are deployed okay so when in case of this honeybees when they are deployed they give rise to queens or workers and when they are haploid they give rise to drones so we got the classification we have three types of insects or honeybees there that is queens then workers and drones out of which which are females mostly queens and workers they are female because they are deployed sometimes drones can be deployed but when they are deployed they are sterile so there is no question of next generation they are contributing for fertilization okay so remember one thing in case of deployed honeybees the number of chromosomes are 32 and in haploid case reduce that that is 16 so 32 chromosomes are present in whom that is one in either in queen or in workers or in both and 16 in case of drones so here when this diploid undergoes meiosis it gives a haploid gamete and this male it undergoes mitosis remember this is the logic in honeybees 
the queens a worker when they are contributing their gamete they undergo meiosis and they produce their gamete in gametogenesis in case of drones in male they don't undergo meiosis why already they are haploid so if haploid undergo meiosis then their chromosome will be n by 2 half which is practically impossible so they go for doubling division that is mitosis and by mitosis they produces their gametes both are haploid equal in number so in this way when these come together that is 2n diploid after fertilization this female decide the next progeny now why this female decides the next progeny or why this diploid has something more which is not found in this type of classification simply during the what fertilization or zygote formation the amount of genetic content contributed is not 50 50% remember in haploid diploid 75% or 3 by 4 contribution is from female gamete and only this 1/4 is contributed by male gamete this is first interesting point that is maximum contribution is from female parent second interesting point the diploid queen or worker they produces gamete by meiosis whereas haploid drones produces the gamete by mitosis must remember that this is a second interesting point again now sometimes the female gamete undergo fertilization or without entry of what you call sperm or male gamete and it produces the progeny that production of egg which is not fertilized by sperm or male gamete that process is simply parthenogenesis now you have to remember here this parthenogenesis is possible in female egg only male does not produces egg they produces male gamete which is sperm and in this male gamete this parthenogenesis is not possible now what is the logic to tell that is the third interesting point that drones directly cannot produce the drones that means drones will not produce the son and neither the drones have the fathers either the drones have grandson or either the drones have the grandparents how because a female egg can produce the next generation without fertilization by parthenogenesis so a female can have son and daughters but a male has to undergo mitosis which then unites with haploid female gamete and that female after fertilization decide what the next progeny will come so what is three interesting point in this haplodiploidy first maximum genetic contribution is from female side second during gametogenesis female produces gametes by meiosis and male that is drones produces gametes by mitosis next interesting point parthenogenesis is possible only in case of female egg that's why male cannot produce their son they will not have their direct progeny like the females have so either the drones have the grandsons or grandparents in this way we can understand that drones because they are haploid 16 chromosome and queens and worker they are diploid having 32 chromosome gives a different type of sex determination that we call haplo diploidy and what is a very interesting in this society of queen workers and drone queen actually feed on the royal what you call honey and once the queen uh, dies during its death he sends certain chemicals and ultimately a next worker bee is being selected as the queen in that hash egg so that's quite interesting and see this kind of interest drones cannot have their father but they can have their grandsons or grandparents and drones are haploid and remember they are producing the gametes by mitosis and everywhere universally the gametes in diploids are produced by meiosis why they are mitosis because they are haploid themselves and they does not undergo parthenogenesis so in this way what is the conclusion of today's topic the study of sex determination started by hanking solid contribution being done and proposed by wilson and netty steven and in case of chromosomal theory 
the male heterogamy is being seen in XX, XY and XX, XO and female heterogamy in ZZ, ZW and ZZ, ZO type of sex determination. Whereas environmental theory of sex determination proposed by Aristotle is not acceptable but it is somewhat applicable in certain reptiles say crocodiles. Okay, so in this way just see this video and read the content in NCRT once and twice you will definitely understand what is sex determination a very interesting and simple topic so i wish uh, you understood this so thank you thanks for watching